Welcome back to Great SpaceX. Today, we're going to provide you with highlights on the most exciting news and developments taking place at Starbase. First, we've got the latest updates regarding Mechazilla's chopstick arms as well as its new ornaments. Along with that, there are amazing pieces of information related to Booster 3. And to wrap things up, we're also going to discuss the update of Starship, Super Heavy, as well as Starlink. Without any further delays, let's get started on today's episode. It seems that SpaceX is making us unable to take our eyes off Mechazilla even for a moment. After a series of extremely impressive videos on Sunday, a new structure appeared between the chopsticks recently. It looks like earrings. Actually, they are the low test water bags or water weight bags that come with a capacity of 1 to 100 tons. Here are some distant views of the launch complex and new weight simulator water bags on the chopsticks. These great moments are all thanks to Starship Gazer. And according to the latest information, SpaceX has just conducted its first successful proof loading test of the orbital launch tower arms with low test water bags, but without water inside. Interestingly, the time it takes to go up and down is equal, both 7 minutes and 10 seconds. This is the fifth and the fastest test for those robotic chopsticks to be able to go up and down in less than 15 minutes. It's a big deal and huge thanks to Lab Padre for this amazing livestream. Just hours later, SpaceX filled bags with water for proof load testing. Catch Arms proof load testing is using the water bags as a mass simulator for super heavy boosters and ships as well. It's safer than using an actual booster prototype for the first time. The chopsticks together with the big bags of water are on the rise. It looks like the SpaceX OLIT or Orbital Launch Integration Tower is trying to bring in all the groceries in one trip. What a champ. While SpaceX continues to fill up water bags under the chopsticks, Test Tank B2.1 has had its load cap removed after completing testing. Next, let's say goodbye to B3. Once hinted at being the first to make the orbital flight, Booster 3 now is history, making way for future prospects. SpaceX has resorted to cutting this booster every two or three rings so that they avoid needing closures to move it in one piece, scrapping it on the launch site and then moving said scrap. And as you can see here, B3 is getting shorter. But don't be too sad, because SpaceX is famous for its motto of reuse. Maybe they can melt the aluminum scraps down and reuse the material on future starships. Besides that, we also have good news to share with you. A new section just wheeled out onto the dome yard. And this is B8's forward sleeve. And here's a better view now. Most interestingly, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk recently has confirmed one of several smaller design changes planned in the interim. On January 3rd, Musk confirmed that SpaceX is entirely relocating one of two secondary header tanks that Starships use to store landing propellant. According to Musk, starting with Ship 24, which is likely the next ship SpaceX will complete, the methane or fuel header tank will be relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone, with the obvious explanation being a need to shift that center of gravity even further forward. It's possible that this change was planned before SpaceX realized the performance benefits of a stretched 9-engine Starship, but it could also be a preemptive modification meant to counteract the added weight of three more Raptor engines and longer tanks. And this confirmation came just a few days after a drawing on the side of a Starship section further confirmed several more minor design changes. This particular drawing was exceptionally detailed and useful, effectively showing exactly how Starship's design will change beginning with Ship 24. The changes are simple enough. In essence, SpaceX will be adding an extra ring to several Starship sections. While obviously not a major redesign, the changes will significantly simplify and thus potentially speed up Starship assembly, which will have additional positive follow-on impacts on plumbing, wiring, and heat shield installation. And finally, another design change was spotted on hardware that will eventually become part of the first full thrust super heavy booster. On December 21st, a super heavy thrust dome 
likely B7s, was sleeved with several steel rings as part of a now routine process, partially completing the first 33 engine thrust section. However, instead of the usual aft barrel section comprised of three six feet tall steel rings, this sleeve was made up of four four foot six inch tall rings the first time in Starbase history that shorter rings have appeared on any hardware. It's entirely unclear what benefit SpaceX is getting from keeping a given ship or booster section the same height while adding more smaller rings to it, a process that will inherently increase the complexity and amount of work required to complete that section. Regardless, it's clear that SpaceX is in the midst of a significant period of design revision that could see Ship 24 and Booster 7 debut with a wide range of upgrades and design changes in just a few months. What's more, SpaceX decided to go all-in on the Starship configuration for the second generation of Starlink. Five months after SpaceX submitted its Starlink Gen 2 modification request, and 19 months after its original Gen 2 application, did the FCC finally accept it for filing, which means that it has taken more than a year and a half to merely start the official review process. In an electronic filing on January 7th of 2022, SpaceX answered a dozen questions from the FCC. The company didn't outright criticize the extreme sluggishness with which it was reviewing the application, but, but the sentiment was still just below the surface throughout it. Most importantly though, SpaceX revealed that it has dropped a plan to use Falcon 9 to launch the 30,000 satellites in its proposed second generation Starlink broadband constellation and is instead focusing on a configuration leveraging its upcoming Starship vehicle. The decision follows development progress that SpaceX said exceeded the company's expectations and means it still intends to begin launching Starlink Gen 2 satellites as early as March of 2022. Many readers and industry followers interpreted this as an implicit claim that Starship will be ready to launch Starlink Gen 2 satellites as early as March 2022 just another of the company's detached from reality schedule estimates, in other words. That's simply not the case though. While SpaceX does confirm it's settling on a Starlink Gen 2 configuration that will explicitly depend upon Starship for the full 29,988 satellite constellations timely, cost-effective deployment, FCC deployment, and operations licensing are almost inherently unconcerned with how the constellation gets into space. In other words, SpaceX will be free to launch Gen 2 satellites on any rocket it wants if or when the FCC approves the constellation. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.